Hey everyone, Sophia here for my great challenge. Welcome back to my channel and this is episode number three in my backsplash for the kitchen. Uh, my husband and I installed a backsplash in the kitchen two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I can't remember. We never had tiles as a backsplash, we only had a um, sheetrock that I painted many, many times and it was constantly getting chipped. I just didn't you know, like the look of it. So we spent a long time, let's be honest, 11 years <laughs> trying to figure out what kind of backsplash could go with a counter. If you didn't watch those videos, um, you can check my channel or I'll link them up there or down below. The process itself was not very difficult. Um, the grounding was a little tedious. It was a lot of wiping and cleaning out and everything. But what I'm going to do today is show you um, the sealer and the cork, well, the transparent silicone cork that I'm going to put at the bottom. But before I do that and get into the nitty gritty of actually finishing off the tiles, I have to tell you that the area all the way on the other side has not been completed. We still have the outlet exposed um, and off because it's uh it's well, i don't know what's going on we have the three prong or three slots applet one with two actual applets and the other two with switches for the other side of the kitchen and now that we've replaced everything and put everything back on we have the plugs are working the actual applets but the switches are not so we have to undo the whole thing we've been very busy um me in school this week and scott doing some other stuff uh, we haven't had a chance to do it, so I'm not going to finish this area yet. Oh, yes, another project unfinished, I know. Um, <laughs> but it will get done sometimes next week. No problem. Um, what else do I want to show you? I want to show you the lights that I've installed underneath the cabinets. Uh, because some of you have asked about it. I posted a picture on Instagram and you wanted to uh, know how I installed them. And you'll see that there is nothing easier than those particular lights so i'll talk about that for uh you know a little bit and then we'll get into um the uh, uh sealer and the whole grabbing thing actually i had filmed this initially and there was no sound so i have to redo this and i'll do a voiceover uh, let me show you the lights first so i'll be right back So these are the lights that I've installed underneath the cabinet and for now I only have two because I wasn't sure if those were going to be uh, good lights or not. They were pretty inexpensive actually and they were only $22 each and they are super easy to install. I'm probably going to get three more but in the meantime let me show you what they look like. I don't want to blind you and watch this. This is so easy. They are actually removable. And you can see there's an off button and an on button. Then you have a night auto and a 24 hours auto. Night auto is when it's dark outside, very obviously. Every time you pass by your kitchen, they will light up automatically. The 24 hour auto is when they are on at all times. So any times you pass by your kitchen, even though it's daylight, they will light up. I'm actually leaving it on 24 hours auto right now because I'm excited about the lights. <laughs> the way it looks um, but very obviously it's more economical you don't have to recharge them as often if you do it on night auto so that would be night right here auto and then here's the daylight now the one thing that I really like about them and hopefully I am not uh, blinding you is that they have a touch button here so you can dim them if you wanted to um, so you can just keep going like this and you see how they dim so some people may want them to be a little bit brighter. So again, they're very easy to plug back in. You just basically um, have them go back on the cabinet. And then if I wanted, for instance, to have them the other way around, which is this way, let me put them on instead of... Uh, there you go. If you wanted them to be just on the wall, this is basically what it would look like, which is kind of nice, but 
they are going to show underneath your cabinet. So basically you would see that you have lights. I like the other way better because it allows me to basically conceal them, but here they are. And again, super inexpensive. I'm putting the link down below if you want to check them out. Um, I really like them. And what I did is put them a little bit more towards the wall than the um, middle of the cabinet. Um, for no reason other than wanting to showcase the tile work. So let's get going and we're gonna start with sealing. So why do you wanna seal your tiles? Because they look perfectly fine without the sealer, right? Um, well, it's to protect the grout and it's to protect the grout, not just because the grout over time will kind of like crumble, uh, especially in my case, because I'm pretty sure you install it properly but it will crumble because you're going to continue to wipe your um, tiles. You're, you're going to clean your kitchen, you're going to go like this. It brings tear and wear on your tiles. The other reason is because this is a kitchen, you're going to get a lot of splashes, hence a backsplash. Grease, tomato sauce, water, oil, juices, you name it, things that spill are going to get on your backsplash. And because my tile is light and my grout is very light, it's in linen color, those stains will go and penetrate the grout and I will never be able to remove them. So you have to seal your tiles and seal your grout so that your stains do not penetrate the grout. And it's a very easy one, two, three step. I bought this grout and tile sealer a while back. If you've watched my channel for a long time, I've had this bottle in the house for a long time. I was supposed to seal the tiles in the kitchen and I never did. Hmm, another unfinished project. You keeping track, I'm not. Uh, sealing that protects grout and tile against stain. That's exactly what this is. So how does it work? You basically shake it, you're going to spray it on your tile and then you take a clean sponge and you wipe it off. You let it dry and then you do it repeatedly. Twice is enough. And what it does is that it won't give them a shine, but the advantage to it is that it will somehow bring a little bit more of the vibrancy of your tiles. So if you have tiles that are kind of muted in color, uh, and mine has a bunch of different colors, you can see that it will bring them forward a little bit. Um, not too much, but again, this is not a shine. This is a protect from water and stain. Um, there's two ways to do it. The first way I'm going to do it here, which is basically spray, wipe, and then do another round. But the second round, you let it sit on for a good five minutes and then you wipe. Or you start by really saturating, let it sit for five minutes and then wipe, which is what I'm going to do on the other side. And the reason why I'm going to do that, because I want to see how either method work. And on that side where I have the stove with a lot of grease and splashes from food, I definitely want the grout to be super, super saturated. So let's get started. We are sealing our tiles.
I'm pretty happy with this. Guys, it looks really good. Um, this is all dry. There's a slight sheen to it, not super shiny. If I wanted them to shine, I would have to put a tile shiner product, which I'm sure exists out there. Or you can be, uh, um, you know, kind of like cutting corners and getting some rejuvenate or some future or whatever they call mop and glow because that's what they're for. They make your tiles shine. But I like it just with a sheen. I don't want them to shine too much um, only because if they shine, they start bringing the backsplash forward a little bit and now everything starts to look smaller. So I'm ready to do my caulk care, which is a silicone. Um, it dries in 30 minutes and this is transparent, crystal clear for kitchen, bath and plumbing. The one thing you want is not use your fingers on this one. You want one of these little tools that's going to help you edge everything against the wall and give you a really nice finish. You don't want any of those, you know, thumb prints on it. So I'm going to start with this area here to see which um, angle I want. I'm pretty sure I want the smaller one. And you're probably wondering, well, you just sealed the whole thing, including the bottom part here where the grout is. Why are you putting the silicone on it? It's to protect the bottom part even more. Because even though I have sealer um, on the grout here at the bottom, the threshold between, or the transition between the granite and the tiles, this is the area that's always going to have like some kind of water or, you know, whatever. Um, I don't want the water over time to get the sealer off and then my grout at the bottom is going to, um, you know, start coming off. So the one thing I want to do first is make sure everything is nice, clean and dry. So I'm using a high quality paper towel, Viva towel. <laughs> They're the best, if you ask me. Um, to do this and prepare it and then we're going to go right into applying the silicone. Just going to start at the corner. Take my little tool here. You know, I realize that you absolutely cannot see the caulk <laughs> because it's transparent. Uh, and I have to tell you, this is super, super sticky. Um, but it's going to work. I just want to protect the bottom part right here. Now, I think some people just leave it as a uh, round, um, you know, they don't even bother to flatten it, but I do want to flatten it because I want to see the least amount possible. Don't forget to leave it on the towel when you're done because what happens um, is that this thing here with the pressure that I apply will keep on leaking and then you'll have a big dollop of that stuff. Now I tried all three angles and tell you what, the flat one that's just pushing it inside is the best. because that's really the one you notice the least. And 
this is the excess. I don't know if you can see how much I've collected here. Clean it off and ready to go on the other side. This is done. It's finished, except for that one side over there. I really like the uh, um, the grad sealer because it it just brought enough of the color to pop out. It's not too much. It's not shiny. And then the bottom part here, um, you know, it is what it is. It, there's some part of it that went on this side of the wall that you can see if you go this way. But you know, once you got stuff on the counter. You won't even notice. You can see it when you're in front of it, but it's definitely transparent. No problem. This is like totally clear. And it's really sealed the bottom part here, which was the most important that I wanted. So this video is over and you're probably wondering, well, what am I going to do next? Because I talked about the cabinets, right? Uh, we want to change the um, cabinet handles. Initially, I was thinking about actually painting the cabinets and I wanted to do a green, um, a light green that would be uh, lighter than the green that I have on the walls. And then it's the kind of stuff that looks good at other people's houses, um, but not necessarily here. And I just felt that those cabinet colors are actually looking very nice and warm with the rest of the kitchen. It's got a nice style. The one thing I don't like, however, is the handle. And we discussed that already. So. We're going to purchase handles, there are library handles, and I talked about it in the last video, and that's gonna be just for the pools like this, um, for the drawers. It's not gonna be for the cupboards. The cupboards are gonna have a matching color brushed steel to go with the uh, stainless steel appliances. Um, but what I'm looking for is handles that are a little bit higher than this, because the problem with these is that they are so close to the cabinet itself that over time a lot of the finish on the cabinet peeled off and came off. Um, part of it is cleaning, part of it is just normal wear and tear. And what I want to do before I put new handles is remove um, those and I'm going to restain the cabinets. And the restain that's going to be in the next video, the restain is going to be this Varathane premium wood stain. And we had a hard time picking which color we needed because we wanted to keep this color, um, but we weren't sure which one it was. So we had to kind of match with pictures that we have of the kitchen. And the one we picked is Colonial Maple. Color in one coat results three times faster. So I don't know how it's going to adhere. So we're gonna have to do a test patch somewhere else in the kitchen, uh, maybe on the inside of a door or something like that, because uh, it says here that you can do wood paneling with it, but you know, I, I don't want to start painting um, or applying this stuff on my cabinet and it's going to make them look terrible. I'm probably going to have to sand lightly where I can see that some of the polyurethane came out, but the goal here is to bring back the beauty of those cabinets, change the handles, and then before you know it, I'll have a brand new kitchen. Now, you want to talk about painting the kitchen. A lot of you have mentioned or asked if I plan on painting the kitchen and initially I did and I wanted to do a light color um, like a beige you know just to put the stuff together and then Scott who's disappeared uh, wants to keep the green. 
I'm fine with that. It's not it's not hideous. What I could do is do both. Um, keep the extension of the kitchen in green and do this area here in light. I may do that uh, because why not? <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's what's coming up in the next video, me redoing the cabinet. So I hope that video will help you for those of you who are like me and have cabinets that are kind of, you know, getting a little dingy um, from regular wear and tear and stains and whatnot. And then, you know, I have cabinets where the dog tried to open. You remember when I had the garbage underneath the sink? That's the reason why I moved the garbage to the top of the counter uh, in a little pail because the garbage was inside, underneath the sink, on the, um, where you go, trolley thing. And my beagle was constantly getting to the cabinet, trying to open it, even though I had a child protection thing on it. And the whole side of that cabinet is all scratched. So I'm hoping that this will help, um, not eliminate, but at least mask. <laughs> or cover the scratches. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't much, um, but the project is finished other than that one side over there. I'm gonna put everything back together. And then the next time you see me, I'm going to do some gardening again. So I'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hey, it's me. And guess what? Click that thumbs up if you really like this video. Thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.